So we've got some content on the site, we've got some structure with menu items and so forth, and our shopping cart uh, works, but let's talk a little bit about customizing it a bit more advanced. So that's going to require taking a peek at, at, at editing code and so forth. Again, this might not be everyone's forte. Most people, it seems, in this class don't have a lot of experience with HTML, so um, it might not be as useful as everyone. And I do have to give the caveat, we're going to be looking behind the curtain. We're going to be popping the hood of our, of our website. We're going to be looking at the raw code. And in theory, if you do change one thing, it could break your whole site. Not one code, one letter, one character could break your whole site. If you accidentally delete a quotation mark, that could break your whole site. So for this testing site that we're working on, that's no big deal. But for your real site live right now that you're making money off of, that'll be a big deal. So that's why we have the duplicator plugin to make a perfect copy of the site. Before I make any code changes, I could take a quick moment to make a duplicator backup, make the changes, no problem, move on. Big problem? Bring it back with the duplicator. So let's assume I followed my advice and we made a duplicator backup. I want to edit the code. We need to do one thing first um, because of our particular setup. We're using the WP Commerce plugin. So we need to do this only once. But let's go over to settings store. We're going to go edit one quick setting of the store. Under the tag, uh, I mean under the tab of presentation. All right, we have general admin, etc. Click on presentation. And I mentioned this previously and now it'll make a little more sense. There's this box here that if we wanted to customize any features of the WP Commerce plugin, they're not accessible just yet until we sort of uh, import them, until we make them accessible to this theme. So these are all of the possible things that we can change for the for the um, WP e-commerce you, you, I'm just going to say, let's select all of these just to see what they, what options we have. Select them all. Just taking a quick look, there's something called WPSC single product. Perhaps that would be the, the screen where we edit to change the look and feel of a, just a <coughs> single product page. We've got the uh, the cart, shopping cart right here. We've got the shopping cart. Remember we didn't like some of the columns that were a little squished? Most likely we will need to edit that page to make that look better. But select them all first and select here, move template files. That'll say the theme. Thanks, the themes have been copied. The pieces of the theme have been copied. I'll show you where in a moment. But it shows that these pieces of the WP Commerce have been moved into your current themes folder. Um, now we are able to customize those elements of the Commerce plugin. Since we're going to be editing deep things, we've also got the option here, make a backup of your theme. You could, but I don't think it's that useful because I've got the duplicator plugin, which I think is better. And the flush theme cache or cache, usually that's not necessary unless, like it says, if you're editing stuff in the file manager, for example, in the GoDaddy file manager, things might not be synchronized. So if you select flush theme, that might fix things. We're not going to be doing that, so we don't need to. But that's what we need to do in order to, for us to change the code 
of our of our plugin uh, to actually view and edit the code hover over appearance and at the very bottom we have editor click on editor inside of appearance that should be called code editor but it's called editor and then it gives us this screen it gives us this screen that says we're in the 2015 theme editing the style.css file this is all of the code a CSS file usually defines all of the colors in use, all of the fonts, the padding between pictures, all of that design stuff. And depending on the theme and the theme author, this might be a very well designed document or a very, uh, a very chaotic one. This one seems to be very, very well designed. It tells you, here's where you can go to edit this and edit that and edit your text and all of that. It is going to be one big, 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 big file full of a lot of code, specifically CSS code. And this is not the best code editor. There's other ones like Notepad++ or Visual Studio or Eclipse or Sublime Text or a bunch of other code editors. And if you've used, if you've done any coding or programming or scripting, you know those are much better than just plain old black and white text. In one of those softwares, you will get color coding and nice indenting and code collapsing and code hinting and all of that stuff to help you code. That's not built into WordPress at the moment. Maybe in version 5 they'll finally add that because usually what I do in my company is I would take all of this code and copy it and paste it into my code editor. Right here. In my code editor, then I would have This is what I'm saying. Color coding, yeah, it's green, who cares? But now I can tell quickly, this kind of code is that color. That kind of code is another color. Instead of all just black and white text, that's a big wall of text that's hard to deal with. If you're using a civilized code editor, and you know how to do a little coding, things will stand out color coded. You've got this code collapsing so that you can kind of, you know, close this so it doesn't distract you. And then as you're typing, you can have uh, code hints that appear to, to help you write your code. So, you, so yes, this is an extra step and I just wanted to check here. This is nearly 6,000 lines of CSS code and that's one piece of the site. This is only the design. Comments area has a padding of 7.6. Page header has a padding of 3.8. This is where you would be editing all of that stuff. The wide column has a margin of whatever. There's also where you find a tune over that picture, and then you're saying this is the uh, hero version. You know, why is the picture put in frame somewhere? Yeah. This could be a place, uh, exactly. Why, why does it look so good on the preview, but not on mine? Uh, so as I said, this one's pretty pretty well designed. It's setting. If you want to edit your footer, it's in section 13. So you'd have to scroll down to find section 13. Right there. Now what program are you in? This is a Windows software called Notepad++. But on the Mac, the one I recommend is called Text Wrangler. Both of these are free. So for Windows, code editing, I recommend Notepad++ and for Mac, um, code editing, I recommend Text Wrangler. Now there's a bunch of other ones out there, people live and die by them, uh, but here's two that I've dealt with myself and I know there's another big famous one. I don't remember if it's cross-platform, but I know on the Mac it's pretty popular. There's another one called Sublime Text. And a brand new one that just came out on Windows that I'm liking is called uh, VS Code. Not VS. Rob, not Rob, VC, Rob, VS. Rob, uh, Aptana. Aptana, that's another very popular one. Eclipse is popular. and um, Yeah, just any code editor. Better than 
this wall of black and white text. And if you're not a programmer, you'll, you can live with this. When you're a programmer, a coder, you, you, you would rather use some software like this where it's built for coding and helping you code properly and finding your mistakes and all of that. Because as I said, I could be editing this in my real site and I accidentally maybe delete this colon here. I was changing it to say color pink and I deleted the colon. That could break my whole site. One character, not one code, one character. It's just like that. It's just one spark plug. How could that break my whole car? It's one spark plug. Yes? Okay, so I just did that. I just had my mouse over and deleted a couple of characters. Uh -huh. Would, like, <laughs> um, control Z? Yeah, control Z. Try that first. Try to press on your keyboard control Z. Did you, see, did you see anything come back? Try to click in the... Well, just just click on just click on the editor here and then press Control Z. Now, nothing will happen even if you deleted it. Nothing will happen until you click Update. You haven't clicked Update, have you? Okay, go to any other page. If it has, if it tells if it warns you, just say Leave Page. Leave the page and then come back and it didn't save anything. This will only update. And that's if why you, you keep backing up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, one other way to kind of give yourself a safety net is this whole block of code, before I make any changes, I'm going to go someplace else and then come back. Before you make any changes, you can very, very quick backup is just copy everything and paste it somewhere. Paste it in Word, paste it in Notepad, paste it somewhere right there. So now at least you've got a basic copy of it without any changes. Even better would be save that on your desktop or whatever. Come back here and then you can make your changes. I do that sometimes if, if I need to do some quick and dirty edits. I don't want to make a whole duplicator backup so I can copy the whole chunk of code here, paste it in a notepad file, save it to the desktop, made some changes, whoops, made a mistake, copy back from the notepad into WordPress and it's back. That's it. But this is the advanced stuff. This is this is, however, in the middle. This is the remember, use a site as is. That's one price. Use a site as is, but then customize it. This is what we do. We go to this file and maybe a bunch of those files on the side and customize it for the client that's in the middle. And then the advanced one is we write all of this from scratch. Six thousand lines or, or whatever. But it's the most expensive and time consuming. Well, we were talking about like um sale price? Mm -hmm. Where would we find that in there? Well, I'm getting to that. But this is one of the things that could be edited in our site. This is the style, the, the colors and fonts and all of that. But sometimes we need to edit something a little more visual on the screen. So that's going to require that we hunt around a little bit on the particular pieces of our template. Before we get to that question, let's look at this. Let's scroll down on the right side and find the one called footer. So footer should be what's at the very bottom of the page. This one is not going to have 6,000 lines. Let's just look at what's in the footer. So here, click footer. What that should then say is, we're editing the 2015 theme, the footer file. And it is a bunch of code, but you might recognize a, a thing or two that says, for example, proudly powered by WordPress. This is a place where you can then change that to proudly designed by John Smith. I remember once you start playing around with it, it's very like all yours, I guess. In a sense, it depends on the original theme, if it's part of the license. If it's oftentimes these themes <coughs> are um, able to do that because you've paid for it and you can change it to some degree. Yes. Maybe it's kind of like the old Facebook. Icon. Yeah, I would probably do it as, through, as the way we saw through the menu, because this particular theme has that. But yeah, you can always come down here to this particular spot and edit this as well. It does require that you know you edit a little code, and if you're not used to that, that might be a bit too complex. But we have the backup of it, so we might 
not be too worried. Just for fun, for practice, let's do that. Let's change it. Instead of proudly powered by WordPress, we'll put your name. So I'm in the footer file. In this wall of code, somewhere it should say something that stands out, hopefully that says like, you know, it seems to be one, two, three, four, five, six or so lines from the bottom. Somewhere you should look around and see something that says proudly powered by. Further along the line, it says WordPress. So this code takes whatever you write within those quotes and then plugs it into this variable. It's doing a little more complex, but right there, within those quotes, so type in your name. Are right. you, is there a way to quickly get to the footer breakdown? Or you just have to find it? The footer, just to confirm, you did go to the footer page, uh, right? It's not in the CSS file. So hopefully you didn't change anything else. Make sure you've got quote, end quote, or actually apostrophe, end apostrophe, very important. If you delete that, that'll definitely break the whole set. Because then it'll say, proudly powered by Victor Campos, question mark, angle bracket, slash, blah, 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 site info, site further, blah, blah, blah. That quote ends it to say, this is the name of the person proudly powered by. Maybe you don't want to say proudly powered by. You can say exuberantly powered by. Or whatever, but just for one quick change. Put your name there and click update and then visit site. Update file, visit site, scroll to the footer, proudly powered by Victor Campos. When I saw that earlier, I was trying to go in and figure out what that is. <laughs> And this is back to the point that if the theme author allowed this, then great. Just do it from their little screen and change it, because some themes let you change that stuff pretty easily. Some theme authors believe, well, this is too advanced. We don't need to let the, the layman change it. But we always have the ability to edit code back to that edit screen, and we can change anything we want. And so it, I changed something here that was not allowed before, not allowed in that it's bad to change it, but not allowed in that the theme author didn't let that for some, for whatever reason, or didn't think of it. Notice, technically, if I hover my mouse over it, and that's still an active link, and it's still going to take me to WordPress.org. Mm -hmm. well, let's go back to that same screen. Um, Let's go back to the dashboard. It's not going to work to do edit page here because that's a piece of a page, the footer. It's a template. That one footer gets used over and over through every page. So it's not that we edit this page. We have to edit the piece. So back to the dashboard. Hover over appearance, edit, select editor. And remember to switch over to the footer document. Footer.php, select footer. Examining the code a little bit more. Let's see. I see here it says proudly powered by variable, which is automatically filled in as Victor Campos. But I don't know. Do you see anywhere where maybe we can edit an address? Well, right there. It's still WordPress. Right there. So. In, in quotes and apostrophes, logically it seems that if I edit that line, that would change where the link is. So should we just mark it to the home page? Or can we take the link completely out? Um, I, I believe we can take the link out in a couple of ways. So let's let's try it. Let me try it first and then I'll answer that. Yeah. Let me. Let me remove it just like that, so it's just in quotes. Let's see what happens that way. We also have another way to do it, but let's just see what happens. I'm going to remove the address, and then... Proudly powered, if I hover over... It's still a link, but it just goes back to the home page. That's a way to do it. 
that's one way if, if you don't want it to go anywhere. Technically, I don't want that to be a link at all. That's a little more complex. Because if we can read some code, I, it says a href equals quote, blah, 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 end quote somewhere, right here, end quote. Um, so actually, if I, and then slash a, so if I wanted no link at all, this is more complex, I would actually delete everything from here uh, to here, and then slash a right here. So we just say proudly powered by your name without a link. So it can be complex, but we have the ability to to completely edit uh, the code. I won't do that. We could if we wanted to. That would work. Um, it's saying Right now it's saying um, it had the HTTP address. Well, if you wanted it to be a mail to, well, you would add it in there. Mail to john at john.com. So that would create an active link as, a, as an email link. I would not recommend this, however. I would not recommend to use mail tos anymore. It's not 1997 anymore. Because putting your email naked out to the world like that is going to invite spam bots to harvest your email and start spamming you. Because these spam bots are working 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, looking for websites that have this pattern. Something at something dot something. Every single email in the world is like that pattern. So if a spam bot finds something that looks like that, even if it's not a valid one, it's going to save it, and then it's going to spread it with its other spam bots, and you're going to start getting spam. So it's not a good idea anymore to set up mail to links like that. That's why we have a contact page where we use a plugin to create a nice contact form. And that's more secure. So then instead of a home page, we might want to shift it over to the contact page. Sure. So we have there. So now that's going to have probably powered by Victor Campos and then the link over to the contact page. I'm assuming that the site is already live, so if it was Victor's Bakery, it would be the address, the direct address to the contact page. Just picking random addresses here. Any change that I make here will not take effect until I click update, so if I navigate elsewhere, it might pop up to tell me you haven't made any changes. Would you like to leave the page? It depends on the web browser, I think. Didn't do it for, for us here. But if you do make any changes, uh, you want to remember to update the file. Update the file, and then when you when you see the result down on the uh, link, it's telling me it's going to go to that contact page. So this opens a whole new world. It pulls back the curtain, but uh, then there's a lot <coughs> that, that we could edit and a lot that could go wrong. So if we, if we scroll down further, we get, this is alphabetical, we get into then, these are the pieces of the WP Commerce plugin. They start with WPSC, account download screen, account editing profile, account cart. So let's see. 
what we can figure out in the shopping cart screen. That's the one that sounds like it's the one when we see all the items in the rows and columns. So let's see. Scroll down to find WPSC shopping cart page dot php. This is a few more lines of code than the footer that we saw a moment ago. This is where if you know the word you're looking for, you just do a copy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So if you're looking for a particular word, you can press on your keyboard control F to bring up find. What was the word we were looking for? Uh, I forgot, so let's... Sale. Who are we editing again here? Oh, uh, yes. Okay, well, we're not in the right place then. That would be the single product. We're looking at a single cake, and it says old price. We want it to say original price. So that would most likely be editing a single product. I'll look at that in a moment. What, what we're looking at right now is the checkout screen. So instead of preview, please review your order. Okay, I want to search for that. And do search. And there it is. Instead of please review your order, we can say your cart. So there's a lot of code here that I would not touch, but if I know what particular thing I'm looking for, there's quantity, price, total, if I want to change some of that, I'll be pretty safe in changing it, especially stuff that's in single or double quotes, product, quantity, etc. Other stuff that I might not recognize, like angle brackets and question marks, I wouldn't quite touch that unless I know what I'm doing. But stuff in the apostrophes or double quotes, that should be okay to change because that stuff usually means it's visible to the user. Which template are you on right now? I'm still in the 2015 template, but no. I'm in the file. I'm in the file WPSC shopping cart page. So I'm going to save that and let's I'm going to update that and let's see what if I if that applied. Okay, then actually I might not be in the right screen. It might not be the shopping cart screen. It might be a different one. Let's see. I'm going to try that second, yeah. WP cart widget. Let's see what's in there. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's chain why it's not changing. Are you trying to change the column and this? Yeah. No, I haven't done it yet. I'm oh, just trying to see. Hmm? What are you trying to change? Instead of this saying please review your order, I wanted to say your cart. Sometimes it's also found over here. Let's see.
So this is part of the process of doing this customization. There's the way this way where us as a company would go in and try to edit these files, make a change, see how it how it looks like. The other way is to read the documentation of the theme. Sometimes there's documentation that explains what to edit and where to edit. And then of course there's the way of contacting the theme author. If you get your theme over from Elegant Themes or Theme Forest or even plain old the ones we get from WordPress, the WordPress.org itself, there's uh, there's usually a way there to contact the theme author or ask a question in the message board and either the theme author or other people, helpful people, will tell you, oh, look in this file, line 12. So right now I'm not finding it off the bat, but I have confidence that if I edit the right screen here, I would edit it. I would have to take the extra step, most likely, to contact the theme author or ask in the forums, and someone would have the answer to edit that, because all the code is going to be in here, just somewhere. And this is, this is why this you can fully customize it, but it does require to have that, that skill and the patience to edit some code. I noticed you didn't that you went to the actual site itself and you highlighted the word, mm -hmm. and then you went back looking for it and mm -hmm. highlighted it in bold. Yeah, that's a trick I use. That I know I'm looking for a particular thing, so yeah, if I select that, copy that, and then when I'm in the code, well, I'm, I'm trying to <coughs> control F and find that. I assume that that's not going to show up a lot of times in my code. This is, uh, people always ask me, now that I'm learning WordPress, do I ever need WordPress anymore? This is one thing that I really like Dreamweaver for. Did I say that right? When, when people learn WordPress, people ask me, do I still need Dreamweaver? This is one of the things that I really like Dreamweaver for. If you set up Dreamweaver and you point it to your site, you can do a search that will search every single file for your one search term. So I really think that's really good with Dreamweaver because it'll search every single file for every single line of code that you want. Here, there's no way to do that. I have to go to individual pages and do Control F. It's not there. Okay, go over here, Control F. It's not there. With Dreamweaver, you can do a global code search for every file of your project, and I really like that. So if I'm having a really hard time, I pull up Dreamweaver, point it to the site, uh, set up my, my local site with it, and then I do a search and I find it really fast. Can you just put this code right into Jamie for them? Does it copy and paste that right in and then search it? Yes and no, but I'm saying copy, I'm not going to copy this one code because it's only this one right. file. I'm saying that my template, when you have your template, it gives it to you in a big old zip file. So unzip that file, open WordPress, point WordPress to that folder, and then you can do that search. And it'll search all of the code in that folder. Well, there's always a, a, a tool. Yes? So, um, you can you just an error on this uh, shopping cart page? Where it says you go into the first game, and you the A with capital, or is this where you go and No, actually, that's something that, that, we, that we can do. That particular change was over at tool um, settings store checkout right there family name there was something that we could edit here and I edited it on accident capital letter that's one of these things that I'm saying that the theme authors or plugin authors or whatever might give you the ability to edit some things and there it is you just have to find it read the documentation some things, like I'm trying to edit it so that it says instead of old price, I want it to say original price. There's no place that I see that anywhere in the plugin, so it's about code hunting. You edit the code and then it applies. So as I said, it would, it would take a little bit of effort to find the right place where, with, where exactly to edit, but I'm um, just going to tell you this is opening the 
opening the curtain under appearance editor it might be too complex for most people but uh, you know give a what's the saying give a fish teach a fish how does it go give a fish mm -hmm. and teach it to yeah, teach it to swim and all of that yeah. Yeah. Teach them how to swim and watch out for the hooks. So, in any event, so uh, here's the fish. Here's where you get the fish in the editor. But then that requires that you know how to fish, you know how to write code. We offer those classes here at this college and other colleges, but then that's a whole other world. Uh, I deal both with front end development and back end development in my different classes, in that in some classes it's very front end, in that it's very visual. You, you cl click the right button, or you can make a graphic really well, and you can handle that. But then back end is, let's edit some code. And then people that are very visual do have a little hard time in the code aspect, because it's just code and letters and numbers. It's different. Vice versa. I teach this Android programming class, where most of it is writing code all day long in the class. We do have aspects of that class where then we have to design your app icon. We have to design your logo. We have to do that graphical stuff. And then those programmers are quaking in their boots because now it's not their world anymore. Where's the code? Where's the letters and numbers? I can't handle this paintbrush and all of that. So people have those two personalities. And if you can do both, the better. Especially if you're your own app designer. If you're the only person in vmcapps.com, well now you've got to do the programming and you've got to do the graphics. And unfortunately, you can judge an app by its cover. So if your app looks ugly, even though it's programmed amazingly, people might not download it. If you can do both, you'll be better off. Here are the same. We've been using pretty much the nice pretty interface to do everything we need. Once in a while, we need to go over to the code, and then that's where a lot of us freeze because this is a big wall of code. If we don't have that experience, or if we have that fear, then we might not accomplish what we're trying to. So I think I've already asked it, but one more time. How many of you have experience in HTML? Experience in CSS, experience in JavaScript, experience in PHP. All right. So uh, if you've got experience in all of those four, you could really, really go far with WordPress. Um, but HTML and CSS usually are the are the big ones. CSS for the design and HTML for the overall structure of things. JavaScript is for interactivity, and PHP is also something foundational. Usually you don't need to edit it because it's much more complex, but CSS and HTML are very useful to learn. Any questions so far?